I will commence with a general description of the atmosphere that existed in the White House prior to June 1972. To one who was in the White House and became somewhat familiar with its inner workings, the Watergate matter was an, an inevitable outgrowth of a climate of excessive concern over the political impact of demonstrators, excessive concern over leaks, an insatiable appetite for political intelligence, all coupled with a do-it-yourself White House staff, regardless of the law. However, the fact that many of these elements of this climate culminated with the creation of a covert intelligence operation as part of the President's re-election committee was not by conscious design, rather an accident of fate. These, of course, are my conclusions, but I believe they are well-founded in fact. This committee, however, is not interested in my conclusions, rather it's interested in the facts as I know them. Rather than my characterizing the climate and attitudes, I shall, as requested, present the facts which themselves evidence some of the precursors of the Watergate incident. It was when I joined the White House staff in July of 1970 that I became fully aware of the extent of concern at the White House regarding demonstrations and intelligence information relating to demonstrators. It was approximately one month after I arrived at the White House that I was informed about a project that had been going on before I arrived to restructure the government's intelligence gathering capacities vis-a-vis -vis demonstrators and domestic radicals. The revised domestic intelligence plan was submitted in a document form to the president for his approval. The president of the committee has in its possession a copy of that document and certain related memoranda pursuant to the order of Judge Sirica. After I was told of the presidentially approved plan, they called for bugging, burglarizing, mail coverage.